Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. God bless you. Thank you for joining in on my YouTube live broadcasting. Can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. Can you please confirm if you can hear me in the text? Give me a one if you can hear me. Okay, thank you very much, guys. I hope everybody is doing okay. God bless. Welcome to my live broadcasting, like I said. I finally got the opportunity and I want to thank everybody who uh, kept supporting us and donated for my new PC because I finally bought a new PC. It took me some time, uh, you know, to get it, but thanks to the Lord, we were finally able to do so. Guys, before we begin, I want to share with you, to tell you that we have today the opportunity to do another teaching. So we will go through some Islamic sources and see what jizya truly means. And as you know, since Muslims always cry for context, we will go to the context today to see what jizya actually means and we will also go through the pact of omar last but not least when i finish my teaching we will have a nice q a session with our guest in the live chat about islam or the mentioned topic in other words you can go ahead and ask me questions and i will try to answer the questions as far as i can so before we begin, I want to ask you to pray with me. As always, let us pray so that God will guide us through this live broadcasting. Pray with me in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, thank you for your endless love and grace. By and through the ultimate sacrifice of your Son, we are saved. Your love for us is infinite, Lord. Thank you for all what you have done for us. Thank you for your greatness. And thank you for our daily bread. Lord, forgive our daily sins. And guide us so we can forgive other people's sins. Thank you, Lord, that you are so mighty. And give me peace when I'm weak and in need of your comfort. Please. Lord, please give me the strength and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deceptions. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, the devil is using deception and we know he desires to keep us from the th truth, Lord. Lord, please don't allow him to win. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, and doubt. Please, Lord, please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank everybody who just joined in. Welcome. God bless. Thank you for praying with me. Today we wanted to go through a very often spoken about topic and that's jizya. Muslims always cry for the context. So today we're going to the context. We're going to dive into Islamic sources to see what jizya actually means and what it is all about. So I want to ask you to subscribe and smash that like button. Let us start. What is actually jizya? Muslims say that it's text for Jews and Christians. It's normal text for Jews and Christians. Well, that's not true. Jizya has nothing to do with a text. Jizya is not a text. It's coming from the root word jaza and jaza in arabic means 
punishment or penalty. Yes, you heard it correctly. It means punishment or penalty. It has nothing to do with tax. That's their lies. That's their deception. They lie to you when they call it tax. It has nothing to do with tax. It's punishment for not being a Muslim as a Jew and Christian. This does not count for the pagans. If you're an atheist, for example, if you are a pagan, you worship more than one God. This so-called tax, as they call it, which is not, does not count for you. So it only counts for the people of the book. Because the people of the book are the Jews and the Christians. You see the deception, guys? So why is it only tax for the Jews and the Christians? And why not for the pagans and for atheists or other people who have a different kind of belief. Why is that? Because, you know, Muhammad, he tried to reconcile with the Jews and the Christians. And for Muslims to take him seriously, he had to come up with a plan and invent jizya for the Jews and the Christians that he tried to reconcile with in Medina, remember? When uh, Muhammad, when he left Mecca and he went to Medina, at that time it was called Yathrib. He tried to become friends with the Jews of Yathrib that he later called Medina. But they rejected him. They knew this guy cannot be a true prophet. He's actually a fake prophet because he was contradicting the previous scripture. Right? You cannot be a prophet in the line of the true prophets if you go ahead and contradict what the true prophets said like Moses, Abraham and other true prophets. If we actually study the Old Testament carefully we can see that Muhammad is nothing but a false prophet and if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered his men to go and stone Muhammad to death. If you go to Deuteronomy 18.20, you will see any prophet who speaks for another god than Yahweh or Jehovah, that prophet shall be put to death. And that's what would have Moses have done to Muhammad. He would have actually put him to death for talking about Allah and the three daughters of Allah. So, what is jizya, guys? Before we go there, let me go through some a very different ayahs, and especially uh, to chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 256, because Muslims always tell you, there shall be no compulsion in religion. Basically that means it's okay for you to be an atheist according to Islam. It's okay for you to be a Jew according to Islam. It's okay for you to be a Christian according to Islam. So Muslims who want to deceive you will use this ayah in their debates or discussions with you to show you, hey look how tolerant, look how tolerant Islam is, which it is of course not. Why? Because either they are nothing but deceivers and liars using this ayah that has been abrogated. You can't actually use this ayah anymore as a Muslim. Yes, it's still in the Quran, but you can't use it. Why? Because it has been abrogated by Surah at tawbah which is chapter 9. Another name for that chapter 9 is chapter of the sword. Surah the safe chapter of the sword. How can we find actually that this ayah has been abrogated? Let me show you. If we go to the tafsir for the same chapter 2, ayah 256 for Surah Al-Baqarah, let us go to, to the tafsir. Tafsir by Al-Wahidi in his Azbab Al-Nuzul. Same chapter, same ayah, 256. If we scroll down, I'm going to show you a trick. This is altafsir.com, by the way, altafsir.com. Maybe the admins can go ahead and provide you 
the link for this tafsir it's altafsir.com if you go to the tafsir you can go to asbab and asul for chapter 2 ayah 256 so if you go to the second page you see you have two pages here if you go to the second page you click on it you will see the following it's the sa still the same tafsir guys but on the second page if you read with me you will see that this ayah has been abrogated there is no tolerance in islam and i'm going to prove it to you and the proof is in front of you read with me this was before the messenger of allah was commanded to fight the people of the book but then Allah saying there is no compulsion in religion so first there is no compulsion in religion so you see it was okay to be a Jew or a Christian right to be in a different religion but this ayah was abrogated by who by Allah himself you see that? So this ayah has been abrogated and the Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book in Surah Repentance, which is chapter 9, Surah Tawbah. Did you catch it guys? So Muslims actually cannot use this ayah anymore. There shall be no compulsion in the religion. They still use it, but they are liars and deceivers. They have no shame, they have no dignity, or simply they are ignorant about Islam. They are simply ignorant about their own faith. And nine out of ten times, especially here in the West, the Muslims actually are ignorant. Right? Who are actually the true Muslims? Well, ISIS are because they will fight everyone. They will fight everyone who does not accept Islam, Allah, and the Prophet of Islam. Either you're going to convert to Islam, and if you are only and only a Jew and a Christian, you are allowed to pay jizya, which is nothing but a mafia protection extortion money system. And I, like I said, the root word is jaza. For example, if I can give you an example in Arabic, if I'm a football player and one of the other guys from the other team he causes a mistake and it happens in the let's say in the 60 meter where you are allowed to take a penalty that word is called jaza darbat al jaza penalty did you catch it darbat al jaza penalty so the root word is jaza which which means penalty or punishment So, as we so showed you, Muslims cannot have a cake and eat it too because the ayah, there is no compulsion in religion, has been abrogated. By which one? Let me show you. By this chapter. Chapter at Tawbah, the chapter of the repentance, chapter 9, ayah 28 and 29. How? Let me show you. All you have believed, this is... Ayah 28. Oh, you have believed. Indeed, the polytheists are unclean. So let them not approach Al-Masjid Al-Haram after this, their final year. So here, Muhammad declares, basically Allah, but you know, it's Muhammad, the same guy. He declares that the pagans are unclean and they are not allowed to enter Mecca anymore. Especially come near Al-Masjid Al-Haram, which is in Mecca. And if you fear abbreviation so basically Muhammad here in the Quran is saying to the Muslims if you fear that you will become poor Allah will enrich you from his bounty if he wills indeed Allah is knowing and wise so Muslims start to complain to Muhammad 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 what have you done what have you done right we are afraid to lose money we are afraid to become poor so they went and complained to Muhammad and told him, Muhammad, what have you done to us? We can't trade anymore with the pagans. We cannot trade anymore in Mecca with the Romans, the Roman Empire, right? Remember that at that time, Mecca was a trading city, right? So they traded with all kinds of people, with pagans, with Christians, with Christian Romans, etc., etc. So then Muhammad said, 
don't don't worry you know we will Allah will enrich you from his bounty if he wills and the solution right to enrich the Muslims the solution for the trading that is stopped and this is the context right Muslims always cry for the context it is this is the context the solution is chapter 9, ayah 29. The next or the following ayah. Read with me. This is chapter 9, ayah 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful and what do not and who do not adopt the religion of truth, which is Islam, from those who were given the scripture. Who are those? The Jews and the Christians. Because we are called Ahlul Kitab, we are the Jews and the Christians, according to the Quran. Fight until they give the jizya. This is a false translation. Fight until they give the jizya. An yadin wahum sagirun. So they feel humiliated or basically small or subdued. You see, here there here's a different translation. Here it says subdued. Sagirun means literally small. So they can feel small, humiliated, subdued. And here you see the filthy, disgusting deception in the translation again. What else is new? Always this happens in the translation. Muslims lying, using deception when they translate the Quran to deceive non-Arabic speaking people. So what is the solution? Jizya is the solution. Right? Jizya which they can force on the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book, the people of the scripture, to get money. Because, don't forget, in the last ayah, Jews, Christians, pagans were not allowed to enter Mecca anymore. Especially not come near Masjid al-Haram, which is the mosque in Mecca, right? Masjid al-Haram. So the solution is jizya. Don't call it tax. It's nothing but extortion money so that the Muslims don't need to uh, work anymore, don't need to trade anymore with pagans. Their only job is fighting. Yes, you heard it correctly. The only job for the Muslims is fighting. Getting booty, right, from the wars. Forcing jizya on the Jews and Christians so that they still can get money from the Jews and the Christians. And if the pagans don't accept Islam, Allah and Muhammad, their heads will come off clean. You know, their heads will be cut off. And if the Jews and Christians don't want to pay jizya, they are asked to leave the land. And if they don't want to leave the land and they don't want to pay jizya, they will be killed like the pagans. So either way, you're going to get killed as a Jew or Christian if you don't pay jizya and if you don't want to leave your house that, have, that your grandfathers and grand-grandfathers maybe have lived in for many years. You see how tolerant and peaceful Islam is, guys? So any Muslim who loves to tell you how peaceful and how lovely Islam is and how tolerant Islam is, this Muslim has no clue what he's talking about. This is the context for jizya. I hope you have been taking notes, guys. Please use this in your debates and discussions with Muslims so they cannot deceive you anymore. We can go to the commentary to show you that we are not lying. If we go to Ibn Kathir, this is the commentary for chapter 9, ayah 28 and 29. So, if we go to Ibn Kathir, his commentary, his tafsir for chapter 9, ayah 28 and 29, we can read the following. This is going to be a very long uh, reading. So guys, I hope uh, you will not fall asleep but it is what it is we are going to expose the lies and deception of muslims when they call jizya a text 
So read with me. Idolaters are no longer allowed in to Al Masjid Al Haram, as we read earlier in chapter 9, ayah 28. Allah commands His believing servants, who are the Muslims, who are pure in religion and person, to expel the pagans. Did you catch it? Imagine. These are nothing but thugs. These are nothing but mafia people. Right? And Muhammad was their kingpin. And how is this Allah calling his man mankind who he created filthy? How is this possible? Anyway, you know, Allah is so loving, man, towards non-Muslims. So he calls them filthy in the religious sense from Allah's Masjid Al-Haram. After the revelation of this ayah, idolaters were no longer allowed to go near the Masjid Al-Haram. This ayah was revealed in the ninth, ninth year of Hijr. So after Muhammad leaving Mecca, when he went to Medina, the Messenger of Allah sent Ali in the, a company, in the company of Abu Bakr that year to publicize to the idolaters, to the pagans, that no mushrik will be allowed to perform hajj. So they were not allowed to enter Mecca and perform hajj after that year. Nor a naked person allowed. You see, even in that time, people went naked around the Kaaba. Tawaf means going around the Kaaba. You see how disgusting it was before? And actually, even in the time of Muhammad, people went naked around the Kaaba, around the house, which is the Kaaba. Pagan rituals, not, Islam is nothing but a pagan religion, adopting pagan rituals inside this satanic man-made religion, a cult. So Allah completed this decree, made it as a legislative ruling as well as a fact of reality. So again, here Ibn Kathir is tafsir fairly, the mushrikeen are impure. So let them not come near Masjid al-Haram after this year unless it was a servant or one of the people of the dhimma. This even goes against today because Jews and Christians, as you see, still are not allowed to go any near Mecca. Because if you go on the road to Mecca, you will see signs on the roads where it says Muslims go to that way. I think it's to the right. And any non-Muslim go to the left, you are not allowed to enter Mecca. So if we keep scrolling down, we can see this is all repeated all the time. Yeah, we know we know that non-Muslims are filthy nudges. Yeah, we know that, you know. And here, this is the most important part, guys. Here is the context for the jizya. And if you fear poverty, if you fear that you are going to become poor, Allah will enrich you out of his bounty. Muhammad bin Ishaq commented, the people said, our markets. So the Muslims are saying to Muhammad, our markets will be closed. Our commerce disrupted and what we earned will vanish. So Allah revealed this verse. He revealed this verse. And if you fee poverty, Allah will enrich you out of his bounty from other resources. This ayah means this will be your compensation. So, <laughs> jizya is the compensation, right, for the Muslims who cannot trade anymore with pagans, Jews and Christians because Muhammad forbade Muslims to do any trading and he forbid the Jews, the Christians and the pagans to enter Mecca. So, jizya Jizya means a compensation, extortion money for the closed markets that you feared would result. Therefore, Allah compensated them for the losses they incurred, for the losses <laughs> of, the, of the Muslims, because they severed ties with idolaters. Did you catch it, guys? So this is the context. You see, we didn't lie. By the Jizya, they earned from the people of the book extortion money. Mafia extortion money. This is what jizya is. This is 
the true meaning of jizya. A punishment for not being a Muslim as a Jew and a Christian. Similar statements were reported from Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, Mujahid, Ikrama, Sa'ad bin Jubair, Qatada, and Ad-Dahak, and others. Allah said. Right? So, in his orders and repetition for his all perfect in his action and statements, all just in his creation decisions, blah, blah, blah. This is what Allah compensated Muslims for their losses by the amount of jizya that they took from the people of the dimma. And we call it the people of the dimma. Can you imagine? We are dimmies. We are not even actually worthy to be called normal humans. We are the worst of creatures, right? That's what we are also called according to the Quran. Right? So as you see, even the greatest scholars, and <laughs> we mentioned Ibn Abbas, which is the cousin of Muhammad. This is not a normal guy, right? This is the Sheikh of Islam, confirming this, reporting this. So, the order to fight people of the scriptures until they give the jizya. So, you have to fight them until they pay the jizya. So, you have to force the jizya on the Jews and the Christians, right? Let us continue. Yeah, until they pay the jizya, so the people of the scripture must pay jizya until they pay the jizya with willing submission, right? As if you have a choice, you have to submit and feel themselves subdued. You see? Did you, did you catch it, guys? Did you see the false translation? Humbled? This is the proof is in front of you. This is nothing but a lie and deception that the translators have used in this translation for the Arabic for chapter 9, ayah 29. So you they have to pay the jizya, the Jews and the Christians, feel humiliated, subdued, wahun sagirun. They have to feel small in front of the Muslims, right? Therefore, when people of the scripture disbelieved in Muhammad, they had no beneficial faith in any messenger or what the messengers brought. Rather, they followed their religions because they confirmed with their ideas, lust, and the ways of their forefathers. Bloody, bloody, blah. And if we scroll down, we will see the Pact of Omar in this tafsir. So guys, if you want to find the Pact of Omar, you need to go to QuranX.com and go to the tafsir of chapter 9, ayah 28 uh, for Ibn Kathir. And you will see the Pact of Omar here. So here, paying jizya, guys, paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Where is the tolerance of Islam that Muslims speak about? Yeah? Where is the tolerance for a Jew and a Christian? Disgraced? We have to pay jizya and feel disgraced? What kind of filthy satanic religion is this? Forcing jizya on people, extortion money so that Muslims can fight and they still can get money from in some way because the trading in Mecca stopped with the pagans the Jews and the Christians. And if they do not choose to embrace Islam in defeat with feeling in defeat and subversive sub servants and feel themselves disgraced, humiliated and belittled. <laughs> so the Jews and the Christians must be disgraced, humiliated and belittled. This is the context guys. The context is in front of you. What a disgusting, filthy religion. Imagine you're a god, you create people, but you have to tell your Muslims, as Allah and the Prophet, to force something called jizya on non-Muslims so that they can feel disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. Is this the re religion of peace, guys? This is the religion of peace? That Muslims love to talk about? 
Let us continue, Lord of mercy. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma or elevate elevate them above Muslims. So Muslims are the first class citizen and the rest are rest. Right? You are not allowed to honor the Jews and the Christians. We are called the people of the Dhimma, you see. For they are miserable, disgraced and humiliated. How many times do we need to thought that we are miserable, disgraced and humiliated? What kind of humiliation religion is this? To humiliate mankind? So Allah loves to humiliate mankind who not accept him? What kind of filthy, disgusting, false God is this? Last time I checked, God gave the free will to choose to follow him or not, right? You don't want to follow, you know, be my guest. But in the end of times, you will be judged. Right? But on this earth already, feeling humiliated by the hands of Muslims, disgraced and, and feel miserable. Muslim recorded from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Do not initiate the salam to the Jews and the Christians. So don't say hi or don't greet or give peace first to the people of the Dhimma, which are the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in a road, force them to the narrowest alley. And remember, back in those days, you had no sewage, basically. The sewage was on the right and on the far right or on the far left of the road. So you have to, you have to force, as a Muslim, you have to force the people of the Dhimma, which are the Jews and the Christians, to the sewage, basically, to the garbage, to the dirt. They are not worthy enough to walk amongst you. So you have to push them to the far right or to the far left so their clothes and their shoes will become dirty from the garbage, from the sewage. So you, you're not even allowed to say salam or peace, right? This is why the leader of the faithful Umar bin al-Khattab, Umar bin al-Khattab or Ibn al-Khattab, so this is the pact of Omar, guys. Here it starts. The real pact of Omar, not the pact of Omar that you can find on some deceptive and lying Muslim websites. This is the real one. Demanded his well-known conditions, which is the pact of Omar, right? be met by the Christians. These conditions that ensured their continued humiliation. So, Jews and Christians must be continued humiliated, degraded, degra degradation and disgrace. So, till the end of times, Muslims must humiliate us, degrade us and disgrace us. What kind of disgusting religion? To the end of times. This is the pact of Omar with the Jews and the Christians then and still now right so this is why we always say muslims when they have no power over you they will use lies and deception but they will smile in your face but they will curse you in their heart food food you filthy kafir right you mushrik that's what they do in their hearts but they pretend to be your friends or maybe your allies but when they have the upper hand and they have an army and they implement Sharia law, Sharia law, right? They will humiliate you, they will degrade you, and they will disgrace you. This is the pact of Omar that still counts till today. I recorded for Amr ibn al-Khattab the terms of the treaty of peace be conducted with the Christians of Asham in the name of blah blah blah, Lahman al lahim This is the document, this is the pact to the servant of Allah Omar, the leader of the faithful, from the Christians of such and such city. city. When you Muslims come to us, we request the safety for ourselves, children, property, blah, blah, blah. We made a condition on ourselves that we will neither erect. So this is the pact of Omar that he made with the Christians. In our areas, a monastery, church, or a sanctuary for a monk, nor restore any place of worship. So we are not allowed as Christians to restore our church or place of worship that needs restoration. We are even not allowed to fix our churches, right? As a Christian, 
under the power of the Muslims when a Muslim has the upper hand in your country when they took it over like example Syria like Egypt right that's what they did to the Christians you can't even use that as a place of safety basically you know to use against Muslims we will not prevent any Muslim from resting in our churches so if, if a Muslim needs to rest he will use your church right for his own benefit to come and even sleep in day and night and we will open the doors of our houses for of worship for the wearer and passerby so Muslims can come for example and pray in our mosque uh, sorry in our churches those Muslims who come as guests will enjoy boarding and food for three days Wow so they can do whatever they want in our churches where's the tolerance we're nothing but slaves guys do you see that we will not, the Christians will not are not allowed to spy against Muslims in, into our churches and homes or hide the seed or betrayal against Muslims Christians are not allowed to teach their children the Quran so imagine if you or I were under a Muslim rule I would have could not have done this with you guys I was not allowed to explain Islam the true face of Islam to you publicized practice of shirk so how, how are you going going to practice Christianity if you Muslims call it shirk so you are not even allowed to practice your religion as a Christian or a Jew in this case a Christian invite anyone to shirk so invite anyone to Christianity so you can't even invite anyone into Christianity or prevent any of our fellows from embracing Islam so you cannot even invite a Muslim to come and join you in Christ as a Christian to join Christianity if they choose to do so we will respect Muslims so the Christians must respect Muslims move from the places we sit in if they choose to sit in them so if example you are sitting you are having a nice time you are sitting in a nice comfy place and a Muslim comes by and he wants to take your place you have to stand up for the Muslim so he can sit there what a disgusting mafia practice hey you Christian stand up I will sit there because I'm a Muslim and you are not right what a disgusting satanic cult we will not imitate their clothing caps turbans sandals so the Christians will not imitate the Muslims in their clothes hairstyle speech so we are not even allowed as Christians to speak like the Muslims use the nicknames and titles of the Muslims or write on cells so we are not even allowed as Christians if Muslims are in power today if there's an Emir or a Caliph who come and take your country and implement Sharia law you are not even allowed to ride a horse right so it's not only jizya guys it's it's much more than jizya when you are under a Muslim rule as a Christian or a Jew you are not allowed to have swords you are not allowed to carry weapons on the shoulders collect weapons you are not allowed to collect weapons of any kind or carry these weapons this is the pact of Omar guys we will not encrypt our stamps in Arabic or sell liquor we are not allowed to use stamps in Arabic as Christians we are not allowed to sell alcohol or liquor in this case as Christians how much freedom do we have under a caliphate guys you see you are nothing but slaves you're not even a normal citizen you're you're lower than a slave we'll have the front of our haircut so we have to cut our hair wear our customary clothes we have to wear different kind of clothes so we can be recognized wear belts around our waists guys do you remember something this reminds me of something 
Does it ring a bell? This sounds like what the Nazis did to the Jews in World War II. Remember? People often ask me, guys, what does your Arabic symbol mean? What does it mean? The N letter. This is the N, the noon, the letter noon that I use. What does it mean? Well, this is what it means, guys. This is what it means. Do you see it? You need to understand when ISIS came in Iraq and Syria, the neighbors of the Christians, they started to paint the letter N that you see here, the letter N on the Christian houses. I kid you not. Imagine you are a Christian, you live with Muslim neighbors in the same neighborhood for, uh, let's say, 40 years. And those Muslim neighbors that you have drunk with, that you have eaten with, that you have shared your meal with, your drink uh, with, right? They started to paint this letter so the Christian houses can be recognized. So when ISIS marched in the neighborhood, they can understand this is a Christian house, go and force jizya on them. Implement the Pact of Omar on them. Right? This is the letter N. This is why I use it. And the N stands for Nasara. They call us Nasara. We simply play along. We are not actually a Nasara. That's what they have been calling us for the last 1400 years. We are called in the Arabic Masihiyun. Ana Masihi. I am a Christian. Masihi. Singular, plural. Masihiyin or Masihiyun, right? So Muslims call us Nasar. This is why they painted the letter N on our Christian houses, right? And actually, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem taught the Nazis to force the yellow David star on the Jews because, you know, Muslims would have always forced the Jews and the Christians to wear clothes and belts to be recognized. So you need to understand that the Nazis, they didn't invent the yellow David star, basically. They got it from the Muslims. And the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was actually the best friends with Hitler. Right? If just ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Type in the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem and Hitler. Do search and you'll see that they are nothing but nice buddies. They are friends. And the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was teaching the Nazis how to deal with the Jews. This is why the Nazis painted the Star of David on the christian sorry on the jewish houses and shops so they can be recognized so they forced them to basically wear stuff wear clothing so they can be recognized as jews so <laughs> wear belts around our waist so the christians must wear belts Refrain from erecting crosses on the outside. So you are not allowed as a Christian to wear a cross around your neck, for example, or on top of the church and demonstrating them and our books in public in Muslim fairways and markets. So you can't even preach Christianity. You cannot practice Christianity outside. We will not sound the bells. So the Christians are not allowed to send the bells bells of the churches on Sundays, for example, or any day, or, you know, when many Christian countries you have at six o'clock, you hear the bells of the churches, if you are living nearby a church. Accept discreetly or raise our voices, so you are not 
allowed to raise your voice while reciting our holy books inside our churches. So we must be very quiet in the presence of Muslims. Nor raise our voices with prayer at our funeral. Not even when someone dies and you go for a funeral, you are not allowed to raise your voice. You see what kind of disgrace and humiliation Christians had to endure under Omar. And this guy still is active till today. So if there's a caliph, your country will be taken over by Muslims. And a caliph gets in power, like al-Baghdadi, for example. You are not allowed to do anything anymore as a Christian that will cause Muslims to be irritated. irritated sorry. Our light torches in funeral possession in the fairways of Muslims or their markets. So even, you cannot even light torches. We will not bury our dead next to Muslim dead because we are najis. Even our dead are najis or by servants who were captured by Muslims. You know, the slaves that are captured by Muslims, you are not allowed to buy them as a Christian, as if we would, <laughs> as if a Christian would have owned a slave, right? You see, Muslims say, eh, you know, you know, Islam does not uh, condone uh, slavery. No, you do. If you watch one of my earlier videos, you, I mentioned the st slavery that still exists in Islam and slavery is still okay in Islam, right? We will be guided for Muslims and refrain from breaching their privacy in their homes. When I gave this document to Omar, he added to it, we will not beat any Muslim. So you're not allowed to beat any Muslim as a Christian. These are the conditions that we set against ourselves and followers of our religion in return of safety and protection. Protection from who? From the Muslims themselves. <laughs> right? If you don't pay the jizya, you don't pay the jizya to a Muslim, bye-bye to your protection. Bye-bye to your safety. You will be killed if you don't leave the land. Right? If you stop paying jizya. If we break any of these promises that we set for your benefit against ourselves, against ourselves, then our dimma promise of protection is broken and you're allowed to do with us what you're allowed of people of deviance and rebellion. What is that? Expelling them or killing them, right? As if any Christian, as if any Christian would sign such a pact today. With any Muslim. See that guys? This still counts. Till the end of times. So any Muslim. Who uses. There is no compulsion in religion. In this ayah. Chapter 2. Surah Al-Baqarah. Ayah 256. Slam the pact of Umar. On his forehead. Show him. Put this in his face. Show him. That chapter 9, chapter of the sword, chapter at Tawbah, abrogated this ayah. And it also abrogated this chapter. Surah Al-Kafirun, for example. Surah Al-Kafirun, where it says, I do not worship what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship, nor will I be a worshipper of what you worship. No, will you be worshippers of what I worship? I think Allah was having a nice uh, shisha uh, session or uh, he smoked something that day when he gave this to Muhammad. For you is your religion and for me is my religion. Basically the same, right? Basically the same as chapter 2, ayah 256. You can peacefully practice your religion. Also abrogated by chapter 9. Ayah 29. Right? So, as you see, there is no tolerance in Islam. Islam has nothing to do with peace. Islam is only peace between Muslims. And even with together, among themselves, they can't have peace. 
Look at the Shia, look at the Sunni, for example. Immediately after the death of Muhammad, Muslims started to kill each other left and right. Immediately. Even his so-called grandchildren, Hassan and Hussein, got butchered and one of them even, uh, his, they cut off his head. Muslims cut off the head of the so-called grandchild of Muhammad. Remember the Hassan and Hussein. So even among themselves, they can't have peace. So this chapter, guys, chapter 9, has abrogated at least, take notes, at least 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs. Because you need to understand that the Quran, you could basically cut it in half. You have the Meccan period where Muhammad was in Mecca. He had to uh, act nice towards the pagans because he had no army. This is stage one jihad, right? We call it stage one jihad. He has no army. But when he went to Medina, when he migrated to Medina and he got himself an army of thugs, right? Of, and thieves, he started immediately to rob caravans, Meccan caravans. And he became a totally different person. That's stage three, when he implemented Sharia law and he basically became the king of, the, of those lands. Muhammad was not a peaceful man anymore. This is the context, guys, of Jizya. This is the real Pact of Omar that we discussed today. So if you, there are any questions, guys, go ahead and ask them in a text and I will try to answer your questions. I hope you really enjoyed this, this teaching, guys. I hope you benefit from this. I hope you took notes because this is very important stuff that you can use in your discussions. Because, you know, Muslims always scream for people. You don't know the context. You Christian, you filthy, nudges Christian. You don't know the context. Yes, we do know the context. As you see, we do know the context. The context is very simple. Pagans, Jews and Christians are not allowed to enter Mecca anymore because we are nudges. We are filthy. The Muslims started to cry to Muhammad. Muhammad, what have you done? What have you done, Muhammad? We will become poor. Our markets will be closed. Muhammad said, wait, wait, wait. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. We have a solution for you. You only need to fight. There is no need for you to work anymore. Go force the jizya and the Jews and Christians and go conquer the countries and the lands around you. Take the war, war booty. Take the sex slaves. Take the women. Kill the men if they don't want to accept Islam. For jizya on Jews and Christians. And let them feel disgraced, humiliated and small, belittled. Right? Let's see if we can ask some questions. Were Christians ever allowed to enter Mecca? Uh, Frau, if you paid attention, my friend, to the, today's teaching. In the beginning, before chapter 9 was given so-called to Muhammad, we know he fabricated these ayahs for Muslims to start fighting everyone and conquering lands because Muhammad created Islam for his own benefits, for his own sexual desires and power lusts, right? He wanted to conquer lands. He was nothing but a warmonger. He was nothing but a warlord. So in the beginning, Christians came into Mecca and they were trading right with the muslims but then when chapter 9 came muslims and christians and jews and pagans were not allowed to trade anymore jews and christians and pagans were not allowed to come near mecca this is why you still see it today we are not allowed to enter mecca even today so this is what happened, guys. Let's see if we can get more questions so that we can answer them in the text. As, as you see, guys, this is nothing but a disgusting evil cult. 
created by evil men to take control, to have power over non-Muslims, to get sex slaves. Right? You and Muslims, you don't know the context. You don't know the context. Yes, we do know the context. Right? Guys, if you have asked me a question before, maybe uh, I missed it because sometimes when I'm teaching, I can't uh, catch up with your questions. So sorry for that. But I always try to answer questions after I am finished teaching. So if you have any questions, please. Uh, Ask your questions in the end, okay? Never trust a Muslim. Well, the red pill, my mother always told me, don't ever trust a Muslim with your women or with your money. And she was right. My mother was right. You actually cannot trust any Muslim with your money and wife. Because if you don't want to become a Muslim, you want to stay a Christian, and you don't want to pay jizya, they will cut off your head, they will take your money, and they will take your woman. I kid you not. So, my mother <laughs> was right when she was telling me as a kid to never trust a Muslim because we have lived among Muslims. I'm from the Middle East, right? Someone is calling me, but I'm not sure if my... Uh, mic is working in no my mic is not working in my sky because I got myself a new PC I forgot to put the right settings so in the next live stream guys I will allow people to call me I thought that Skype was normally good but it, it seems that I need to fix the settings in Skype. I will not do it right now. So forgive me if I'm not going to take any calls. So there is no need to call me in. Someone is asking me, Shirley, Rob Christian, how do you debate with Abduls who talk over you and never allow you to talk? <laughs> well, Shirley, um, my way is just listen to a Muslim and he will bust himself while he speaks. So always... You know, stay calm, let him speak, and use his own words against him. That's my own tactic. I always listen carefully. I have a headset, right? I have a headset. Very good one. Very old, but good one. <laughs> and I always listen carefully to a Muslim. And the Muslim will say something. Either he's going to lie about Islam that I can use against him and I will go to the sources to expose him or he is going to make Allah and his own prophet look bad and I will show him from the Islamic sources they don't let you speak well let, let them finish and use what they said take notes while you are talking with them take notes and it's best to record you know Record it, recorded uh, conversation, so later you can play it for him and show him, hey, look, look what you've said, but look what your sources say. So you are basically not a true Muslim, right? When Muslims use Surah Al-Kafirun, like I said, or chapter 2, Ayah 256, to show you how tolerant Islam is, show them what you have learned today from this teaching. Yeah, and red pill lying is the most popular sport in Islam, especially, especially with the Muslims who do not know real Islam or the Muslims who do know real Islam, that they will use deception and lies to try to deceive you into Islam, right? Show them this video or take notes from this video. Go to, to Tafsir to learn 
what an eye actually means, right? Because they always scream and cry for context. Now, go to the context, right? Yeah, uh, Muslims can't read the Quran, but somehow they're all Bible experts. Well, yeah, they never read the Bible. They love to talk about the Bible. But when we read the Quran, they say, well, you don't, know, you don't know how to read the Quran. You don't know the context. Well, we do. We have been doing this for many years, guys. I didn't start yesterday, right? I started like 14, 15 years ago. The guy who's keep calling me, there's no need to call me because my settings for Skype are not okay. I forgot to uh, put the right settings in Skype. Because I, this is the first time that I went live with my new PC. So I still have to fix my Skype. So stop calling, whoever you are. There's no need. Rob, tell me about Solomon and the army of talking heads. <laughs> well, yeah, it seems that you already know. What do you want me to tell you about it? Right? Solomon uh, basically had a ring, like the uh, ring of uh, the Lord of the Ring movie, right? Solomon had a ring. He could control the animals and the jinns. The scene, the animal kingdom, and the unseen, which are the jinns. So even the jinns were commanded by Solomon. You know, Islam is crazy, man. A ring that can control them all. <laughs> yeah. I think people are out of questions, it seems. So I hope, guys, you love today's teaching. I hope you will benefit from this. If you like this teaching, guys, please download this video. Uh, cut out the, the stuff that you like. Right, the parts that you like or you want to share on your own YouTube channel, cut it out and upload it on your YouTube channels or social media. And like I said, please don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button, guys. Thank you for watching. Please keep supporting us and God bless everyone who was watching today on our live stream. Thank you and see you next time.